But yes, we are here now, so let's chuck some paint to paper ready for this New Year watercolour demonstration. Over the shoulder here we've got the old um, painting that I recently did on um, a live virtual watercolour workshop. This is the famous Sycamore Gap tree uh, up in Northumberland, which sadly was chopped down for want of a better phrase um what a shame but we've captured it here if you like this painting you can have a go at doing this on the website or the w's watercolor.tv do check it out but what i've got is all the materials geared up here for this uh, watercolor demo uh, today so if we take a look over on the palette here we're all kind of set i've not cleaned it since before christmas it's a little bit messy there um, i've got my own range of paints of course matthew palmer's watercolor paints are there um, I'm not really going to go through the colours I'm using until I use them, otherwise it's like watching paint dry, so that's there. And um, yeah, some colours I will be using will be uh, the skin tones, there's two skin tones in the range, light and dark, these are beautiful colours. You can just about make those out there, skin tone light, skin tone dark. Um, I've got some natural turquoise here which is really nice for seascapes but we'll kind of go through the mixes if you haven't got all these fancy colors you could just do this with just your three primary colors to be fair you could do it with your red blue and yellow have a go it is a demo working pretty quick um they brushes wise the staple three brushes which are no brainers to have um matthew palmer super point brushes we've got large medium and small there which is basically a size 20, a size 10 and a size 6. Lovely brushes. So I've got those. I've got the water, I've got the kitchen paper here. Yeah. Um, I probably should have cleaned the palette, but never mind. After all, it is a Matthew Palmer easy clean uh, watercolour palette, is it not? Yeah. And then down here, lined up below, uh, we've actually got the uh, paper which is here, all set. We've got the paper right there, all stuck to the board ready for action. It's a quarter imperial sheet of 100% cotton watercolour paper. Um, that is ready for action, if you like. Um, and that is going to be perfect um, for, for painting on. Now, no sketching involved here. I'm just going to go straight for this. I don't know what I'm going to paint till I do it. Um, it's going to be some kind of a seascape. So do stick around for this. I've got a plastic card there, which I might use for some cliffs. I've got a coin wrapped in some kitchen paper that I might use to put in the sun or moon on. I don't really know until I start doing this thing, if I'm being 100% uh, honest with you. But th the first thing I want to do is I want to get this thing stuck to the board. So we'll pop the masking tape across here, removing the excess stickiness. And we'll pop that probably about a third of the way up. Something like that would work. There you go. That's it. That that's your prep right there, done and dusted. Okay, nothing more than that. Um, I wouldn't have said is needed for this one today, which is great. Now, once that is actually stuck down, the first thing I want to do. Is just use water nothing else just use water with the biggest brush so this is a large super point size 20 brush and what we're going to do here is we're going to wet make sure that's stuck down well we're going to wet the paper i am working on a bit of a tilt here as well i'll be honest with you so we're going to put the water on here we'll wet it is it me or is it moist we're going to wet it through because it is watercolor now i've got a stray a stray pubic, um, sorry, we've got a stray hair there. We're going to leave that there. You've got to stop saying what you think, Mr. Palmer. We're going to wet it. It's Friday. We can say what we like on a Friday, can't we? It's the weekend starts here. Wet it two or three times. I don't want to go for something quite dramatic. I'm feeling dramatic. It's been a dramatic week. First week in January back at work. It's always a bit dramatic, yeah? Um, so that is all nicely covered and what we're going to do is jump straight back to palette and we're just going to choose a colour at random. I think I'm going to use these skin tones actually, that'd be quite nice. Um, light and dark, I'm using the lightest one here. Look at that lovely, nice thick juicy watercolour. Just a bit of moisture in brush. It's like a creamy peachy colour. Beautiful that, beautiful. Love that, really nice. And yeah, let's just sweep this thing in. We're going to go dramatic. 
like an episode of EastEnders this, we're going to go for some drama. So that's quite a nice peachy colour. Beautiful. I like that. Isn't that nice, that colour? Like a soft kind of peachy kind of tone. And it will dry different. And I'll tell you the reason it will dry differently is because the colour is actually opaque. Now what does that mean? That means that it will shine out more once it is slightly dry. Next colour we're going to go for is going to be some uh, kind of a violet, I think. So I'm going to go straight to that. I'm not cleaning any brushes here because we've been lazy. We've got some natural violet, beautiful, look at that. Bit of natural violet, gorgeous, rich, thick violet. And I'm going to go in, look at that, straight across, stick it on there. Bring it across and cross your brush a little bit and let your colours mix. You can put some more spaces between so you get that kind of atmospheric transition of the colours. That's a big word for a, a Friday. Big phrase, isn't it? Put that in there. Let's get a bit more violet at the top. Beautiful. A bit more up there. You can literally use the paint like almost pure if you want to. You can go... You can go thick with this if you want to go down that route. It, it starts to give a bit of an evening atmosphere, don't it, to the sky, which is lovely. I love that violet. Um, what I've got over on the palette then, I've got this coin here, which you can see is kind of wrapped in a bit of kitchen paper. It's an old English pound coin. Do you remember them? When I was your boy, what we're going to do with this one? I'm just going to stick it up there. Uh, there. Where should we stick it? I'd like to tell you. Um, let's put it just there. Get on with it, Palmer. Put it there. Look at that. Beautiful. So we've got a bit of a moon from a pound coin from 19... Oh, actually, it's 2001. 2001, that. Collector's item, that. Put that over there. Then I'm going to go for the smaller brush. We'll come back to the palette. We're going to go for a size 10 brush. Um, or a medium super point. Get yourself these brushes, folks, while they're in stock. Beautiful, beautiful things. We're going to go for natural grey. All the colours, all the materials are all available on the old website. You can just see that up there, up here, kind of ish, there. All the W's, watercolour.tv, beautiful. There you've got the grey. Nice and thick, like me. Good, strong bit of colour. Nice and heavy. Don't be, don't be afraid of the colour, will you? And what we'll do with it is we'll just give it a bit of a tap on the tissue. Now here, we're gonna put some clouds in. We need some thin in this. It's a bit flat looking. You said it. So we need to put some clouds in. And what we're gonna do is use this color very thickly, thick, strong color on tissue. And we're going to mix the brush and twist on the paper. So I'm mixing and twisting. So what do I mean by mixing? Well, what I mean by that is that the paint is actually spreading and it's, Picking up a little bit of the skin, picking up a little bit of the violet. And hopefully you can see that colour is coming through more now against the dry page, which is really nice. So a bit of an atmospheric thing. That's that stray hair, look at it. It's still there, loitering, <laughs> loitering. Bit of a twist, I love that, little twist. We're gonna soften all this in. Yes, we're gonna. Now, if you if you're not understanding the language of Mr. Palmer, gonna is a Derbyshire phrase, same as "I hey up me duck." That's one as well. "I hey up me duck." And love, or or out love, or out love. Gonna means that we're going to. Hey up me duck means, hey all right. All right love, means that I don't love you really. It just means just that you're saying, how's your day going? Is there any more Derbyshire sayings that we can come up with? If you are in Derbyshire, do make sure you check out the link in the description for Connect Fire because I can't say how much of a game changer it's been to my internet life. You can get 60 pound, you can get 60 pound credit via the link. Only place you're going to get that. Now, I want to soften all this in. There's a bit of spit there. See that bit of spit? Clean the brush. 
clean the brush, wipe it through the tissue, squeeze it, and we're going to soften. We're going to, yes, we are. In fact, you know what? Sod the expense. We're going to use the big brush here. What? Yeah, it's 2024. In the future, we can use the big brush there. We're going to squeeze all the life out of that brush. Squeeze it so it kind of goes a bit flat, kind of. So you see it's gone a bit flat. And then we're going to use this to wipe away some highlights in the clouds. Now, this is one of my favourite parts of doing this. So literally, I'm wiping the bottom of the cloud because clouds have bottoms, apparently. We're going to wipe it up. And look how it's lifting, it's illuminating the clouds. It's blending them in a little bit. So it's as though the moon is catching it or something. or It's just giving a lovely little bit of life into the clouds. Can you see how you can just sort of tap your brush on the side and it's putting, it's putting light into them. It's really nice. It's quite rewarding. Now, if anyone's panicking about cauliflowers here, it's not one of cauliflower at all because cauliflowers only happen if you're putting more paint in uh, or water. And we're not doing that. We're just basically softening the bottoms. And we're going to feather these edges away. Look how beautiful that is. I love that effect. If your brush starts to run out of energy, just clean it in the the water. Wipe it through the tissue again and continue. Uh, literally using the side of the brush. And because this brush is, is made out of a special hair that will stay in shape, it's really nice for that. If anyone's got Matthew Palmer Sky and Cloud brushes, these would be great um, for that. Really nice for that. Look how well, we can just sort of tap the brush. Beautiful, beautiful effect. Really, really nice. Loving that. Got excited then. You see my voice went deep. Let's bring it in. Because it's picked up a bit of colour and because it's nice quality cotton paper that I'm using, I can actually drag little skinny lines. Look at that bit of spit there. I'm quite pleased with that. That was excitement right to there. Common as muck. Common as muck. Nice, that looks really good. Happy with the way that's gone. That's a lovely atmospheric sky. Quite pleased with the the uh, way it's looking. Definitely got a bit of an evening atmosphere to it. Nighttime vibes. A frosty afternoon in the winter when the moon comes through. The sunset left that warm residue behind. Beautiful, beautiful. Can't go wrong, can you? So that's your sky. Now, obviously, we're going to make this into a seascape. Stay with us. Stay with us because things can only get better, can't they? So down here, it's almost dry enough to touch, if I'm being honest. As the actress said to the uh, um, <clears throat> okay, back to the palette. Then we're going to go grey here, natural grey. You can mix this grey from primary colours. If you mix your purples from your red and blue and then drop yellow in it will go grey but a good thick bit of grey is quite nice here very strong colour dry brush as well wipe it on some tissue and then back to this what we're going to do here is paint in some distance I think over this side actually so let's go for some distant you can see how the paper's still damp I mean that's a good sign of quality that let's go for some depth here Some little trees or something on there and then i'm going to clean the brush really really well this is just water just water and then i'm just using a bit of water here just to soften blend it all the way blend it all the way can you see that depth we've created mist you could do a similar thing to what you did on the um clouds here you could squeeze the the brush through your fingers, make it flat, and then you could drag out some light. Almost so the moon's catching it kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? So that little bit of little bit of light coming through. Which is really nice, yeah? Beautiful. Look at that. So it's catching a bit of highlight. We might well put a bit more on, but that just gives a bit of distance there. I think it's quite important on this picture to make sure that it's quite dark on this little horizon. So I'm going to tap in a bit of... Um, 
grey spot. So I'm literally just using natural grey straight from the blob, pretty much straight from here. Nothing too exciting about that. Um, again, a thick colour is advisable here because if that's nice and dark there, that's going to give us some character to that area. So I'm working at my own pace. I'm working at sort of watercolour demo pace here. If you're trying to paint along and you think this is going a bit too uh, kind of quick, a bit too fast, then that's where you might want to consider joining in with one of the uh, watercolour workshops. Um, these pretty much happen every weekend, every Sunday. There's one coming up this Sunday. As I'm live on the 12th of Jan, there's one coming up this Sunday. Uh, which would be the 14th and that's going to be a really nice one I'll I'll pop the information on the screen for you now here you can see it Sunday the 14th of Jan paint a stunning seascape with beautiful sunset uh, sky featuring the Endeavour Captain Cook's famous uh, tall ship so it's going to be a lovely workshop now that is very different to how we do what we're doing today very you know very much holding your hand through the project doing it nice and steady it's the first one of 2024 it's a brand new one uh, it's happening live uh, this Sunday. Um, all the information is in the description below if you want to get yourself booked onto that. Or you can jump on the old website, which of course is up here, all the W's watercolor.tv. Just while things are drying here, because it's just starting to dry now, I'm just going to quickly show you how to how to book on. So if you jump on the website, all the W's watercolor.tv. Um, then all you do very, very, very simply is just click on the big flashy button on the top of the screen, which has got the date of the upcoming one. So as we are live here on the 12th of Jan, it's the 14th of Jan 24. Click it. There's the information. Uh, you can watch it live at any time. It's yours to keep forever. So uh, three colours, three brushes, sheet of watercolour paper, and you can paint along Sunday. Watch live or any time. I bet a lot of you people watching in the live chat are taking place. Let me know, give me a thumbs up if you're taking place uh, on this workshop, if you're booked on this or have you done a previous one? Um, so yes, 14th of Jan, 10 till 2 p.m. UK time. It doesn't matter one bit if you can't be there uh, live. That's the thing really about these workshops. It doesn't matter if you can't be there live on Sunday. It really doesn't matter because it's yours to keep forever. So it's the first one. The year. This painting here of the Sycamore Gap tree um, up at Northumberland Hadrian's Wall, Robin Hood's tree as it's, it's known, this was done on one of the virtual classes. So make sure you get yourself booked in. I've got about 14 spaces left. Back to this. Now this is just about dry, not quite dry enough if I'm honest. Um, so I'm just going to get the heat gun. Um, literally this is like washing paint dry. So I'm going to be using this heat gun here. Yes, it is a heat gun. It's a hair dryer. Being careful near water. I'm going to dry this off. Um, it's not very exciting. So while that's drying off, I'm just going to, again, remind you of um, information regarding today's sponsor of this video. So just have a couple of minutes. We'll be back when it's dry. Check this out. Let me tell you about today's sponsor. The sponsor of this video is Connect Fibre. They provide me with full fibre broadband up to 1,000 megabits. I'm currently getting about 975 megabits per second. It's a dream come true for live streaming, for uploading videos, for streaming content. It is absolutely brilliant. People often ask me what internet do I use to get these really nice slick videos. Well, there you go. Connect Fibre is the secret to that. So I encourage you to check them out at Connect Fibre. Dot co dot uk so if you're looking for a broadband provider who offers both speed reliability then look no further than connect fiber a leading provider of full fiber broadband who specialize in faster fairer and flawless internet connections with connect fiber there are four great packages to choose from if you have to be ultimate in hyper fast broadband then the hypersonic package is perfect for you with astonishing speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second it is mind-blowing all at a great affordable price as well, ensuring streamless streaming and ultra fast upload and download speeds. There's also Connect Fiber TV as well, which can be added to the hypersonic package. This gives you hours and hours of video on demand streaming services as well as TV. There's even a phone and mesh service available. I use the mesh service because that's really good for me. It's what it does, it allows me to have the actual internet throughout my collection of studios here is brilliant for live streaming i'm streaming this via wi-fi using connect fiber and the connect fiber mesh so connect fiber 
is available currently in Bolsover in Derbyshire, as well as other parts of Derbyshire, Cambridgeshire, Essex, Nottinghamshire and Yorkshire. Connect Fibre, faster, fairer, flawless broadband for you. Visit connectfibre.co.uk to check availability and find out more. So make sure you head down to the description for this video to click the affiliate link that will take you to a page where you can sign up for super, super fast um, hypersonic speed connect fiber and it will really help this channel and me doing these free live videos if you do click that link it really does go a long way and it also give you a wonderful kickback of 60 pound yes connect fiber will give you 60 pound but only via the link below so let's get on with the demo thank you for that just uh, that's given me time to get the picture nice and dry and it is now nice and dry so let's get back to this then so it's all dry i've used a hair, hair dryer you can see i've also uh, removed the masking tape as well because it's sensible to take the masking tape away at the point <coughs> of the masking tape uh, sorry of the hair dryer being used <coughs> excuse me makes perfect sense to do that so that's all sorted and um, let's add some c and then we'll put some cliffs and maybe some other bits look we we are painting from scratch we're winging it basically so do stay with us for this one um what we're going to do now is we're going to come back to the big brush again so we'll jump over to the palette and we're going to be using just water nothing else just water here so i literally just got the big brush here and um, just got a bit of water on nothing more than that and literally putting a probably just a single coat of water on the bottom section here you can't beat a bit of wet sea can you Do you know what i mean a bit of wet sea so we'll pop that on now this is going to be a pretty straightforward picture so it's going to be good for for someone that's just wanting to get into the old watercolor journey you might notice i've got something at the top of the board just to give it a slight tilt as well that's quite useful so a coat of water possibly a second skim would be quite useful as well there we go and then we're going to put the colors into that so if we come back to the palette i think with the size 10 brush actually uh what we're going to do here is we're going to put some of the colors that we've already used so we've got that light skin tone color here we've got the violet we've got the gray then i want some turquoise in this as well we need a little bit of turquoise in there as well so it's nice to get that warm colour coming through. Horizontal. Bring it across. Again, that colour you'll see a lot more once it's had a bit of time to dry. If we jump back to the palette, we'll go straight into the violet here. The violet's there. Ready all the way across. We've got to bear in mind we've got the moon as well to consider, so that moon is going to come into this as well. Uh, reflection of the moon, that is. Quite nice how we've got that dark edge. So if I put plenty of colour over here, I know I can get some light from the moon coming later. Just big horizontal sweeps, forward, back, size 10 brush, medium super point, if you've got those. I love how the colours all mixed together. Look how the skin tone is sneaking through. We're going to go turquoise now, so this is a big change. Wait for it. Excited stuff. You sad, Palmer. We'll bring it in. There's your turquoise. Natural turquoise. Beautiful. My favourite colour, hence the reason we use it on all the, the branding. And that's going to go in. Not too much of a turquoise, but it's there. And I want it to mix with the other colours. I love natural turquoise. It just leaps off the paper. Beautiful colour. Big horizontal sweeps. It's nice to get that warm colour from the skin tone, but then the cold contrast of the, the turquoise and the violet as well. This is all background stuff. Once that's had time to dry, I'll get more light in it. But you can see how that's it's putting the base coat on we're going to get more out of this uh once it has had a little bit of time to dry uh back to the palette we've got the gray we've got the gray here which is lovely so we'll get the gray there it is and we're going to go in with the gray 
and darken the corners. We'll get that coming across almost to reflect some of that background. We can do more work on the reflection later on, but it's there and it's all giving us a nice dark base ready for putting that moon in the reflection of the moon, which we will get to. We will get to that at the minute. We're just building up shadows, building up darkness. Especially in these corners. Almost makes a vinaigrette, sorry, a vignette. Lead you in. Yeah, but where's where's your light coming from? Did you wet it? There we go. Beautiful. Still workable. It's, it's lovely how it's all nice and. Workable. That looks really nice. Happy with that. What I'm going to do here is put that brush away. I'm just going to go for the size six brush. I've used all the grey that I popped in there, so I'll get a bit more. People often ask what happens once your paint dries up. Well, just add a bit of water to it. Half an hour before you start painting it, all loosen it up. If you put some really hot water, it will loosen it up some more as well. This is natural grey. You can see how strong it is, can't you? A really deep colour. Uh, what I want to do with the grey is just kind of Pop a little bit more in the way of detail across the back here. A bit of a distant bit of activity, even reflect it a little bit as well, to be fair. So you can see it's adding reflection. You don't tend to really get much in the way of reflection in the sea. And like I say, on, on Sunday this week, we are doing quite a detailed seascape on the workshop. Not a speedy demo like this. It's holding your hand, it's giving you time to work. Those workshops are lovely. There's currently 167 past workshops to choose from. I know a lot of you here have probably done them all. Um, thank you for your support through the years. We are approaching the fourth year of doing them, which is really nice, um, which is great. It's got a fingerprint there. I'm not decided what I'm going to do with my spit mark yet. Common as mug. There we go. Beautiful. So that's quite nice. It just gives that nice edge. We're going to get a lot more light into this one once we've got to that stage. But really, before I go any further, I'm getting to that point where I want to give it a dry again. So I'm adding the horizontal lines. Now, remember, this is originally being filmed live. If you're watching it back afterwards, it was done live, unedited. Um, so all the drying time is left in. So, which means that if you're working yourself, it gives you time to do it as well again. So I'm gonna grab the old, I'm gonna grab the old heat gun, which is over here. I'm gonna give it a blast. It's not very exciting. Why don't you enjoy looking at the workshop that's coming up um on the 14th and great time to jump on the website 12 spaces left ish here it is this is the info It's a bit boring this isn't it, it's like watching paint dry.
there you go that's called the dry sea but you can see it's nice and dry now um, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit on the bumpy side it's dry enough to work with we need more interest than this this is very <coughs> at the minute it's very basic looking looking very straightforward um so it's just there and um, what we're going to do now is going to put some cliffs or something coming down this side some nice big bold cliffs don't be afraid of this will you um i'm going to put some masking tape on actually so we'll take the tape we'll remove stickiness from the tape and we'll pop a little bit of tape just let's say there pop that on there another little bit of tape is going to be a little bit higher let's say that's going to be about there so we pop the two bits of masking tape on quite nicely in that corner and then we'll jump back to the actual palette and we're going to go with the grey we're also going to use the darker skin tone because there's the two skin tones is the light and the dark we use the light in the sky we're going to put the dark in the cliff that sort of deep color is quite effective so we'll get the gray don't be afraid of the strength of color here please don't worry about how dark that actually is um it's just there for us to work with um what we're going to do is we're going to work up from this gonna rotate the board a little bit what's she doing so he's using what are you doing using the masking tape as an edge put little rocks and cliffs on in the mind i'm thinking somewhere like i don't know where we're thinking this could be i don't know it could be anywhere isn't it really i suppose Hawaii. It's not like anywhere I've been in Hawaii. Never been. You've ruined it. Okay, I'll bring that in. And then we're going to alternate some colours. Now this is the thing here. We're going to play around with colours. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab some skin tone, dark and look at the consistency of that color that is a mean old color that is thick that is thick stuff there it's like almost oil paint consistency what are you doing you've ruined it it's all going to come out in wash Put the grain as well you can go right up to these clouds here Playing around with the colour, don't be afraid of the colour. Think think dark, think strength, think colour here. I want to pop a bit of green in it as well. What? Yep, you heard it. That is a thick old colour, that. Beautiful. Look at the richness of that. This is a good example of seeing it through to the end. There's nothing better on TV, is there? Chase is not on yet. Tipping point, is that on yet? What? What about loose women? Whack a bit of, whack a bit of loose women, don't we? On an afternoon. Is that still on, loose women? I got to work with a couple of loose women. Penny Smith and... What was her name? Jenny... I can't remember. Eclair. Jenny Eclair? Did a TV show with them couple of years ago this is natural green by the way just drifting off point there get a bit of green in there on the cliff side now that is all mixing like glorious thick color now what we're going to do with that mess is put some highlights in but unfortunately we've run out of time so join me next time in three weeks time where we're going to paint part two bye for now only joking back to this cliffhanger you see that was a cliffhanger it is scripted this believe it or not we've got this this i'll, I'll cover the phone number up disney reservations <clears throat> this was uh just slipped into the old pocket on a trip um make sure that this is nice and damp here so if you need to reactivate the paint on the edge of the cliff
put a bit of ex excess water into it like so plastic card i'm going to go up here oh, i'm going to come down actually i'm going to come down from there wipe it on the tissue of other effects Really nice, this look at that. Beautiful. Look how it's putting light into it. It's actually scraping off. I'm tapping the card on tissue as I do this, by the way. Now, again, if this was a workshop, I'd be really taking my time with you. The workshops only use primary colours. I want to say that one as well to you. So, if you're thinking, well, I've not got all these colours, well, you don't need them. I mean, you can pick them all up from the website, of course, you can, but it doesn't need them. And that is such a nice little effect. Look how beautiful that is. I love that. What a what a difference. What a difference a bit of plastic card makes. I think it's quite important here that we have some darkness around the bottom. Where it sat. So I'm just putting a bit of extra shadow in there. On that cliff edge. I mean, this is meant to be a quick and easy painting. Bit of a paint along with type vibe. Put in the brush. Just add a bit of a brush up. Soften. And then this is where we come unstuck. We'll slowly take the tape away. Nice. Look at the depth we've created. Look at look at the depth we've created. Look how far you can travel from there to there, eh? Simple picture, but it's coming together. This watch reflection, of course it does, it looks like it's floating. Um, so, we can use that. We can jump over to the old palette, which is here. We've pretty much got the colours we want for this. We've got the grey, um, which I'm going to mix with a bit of that dark skin. I mean, this palette's getting a bit messy, but lovely, lovely, jolly. Bit of a... David Bellamy, God rest his soul, as they say, crusty and all that stuff. What we're going to do, if you're not sure, I'm talking about Google him. I used to love watching David Bellamy on the TV shows. A character. Look at this reflection that we're bringing in here, yeah? Nice, right? Horizontal lines to reflect it. Works well. It's important that you grade it up from horizontals, but look how that's giving us some, some sort of movement in that water there. I'm going to continue that darkness across here. We've got the colours that we want for this. on the tissue before we apply it anywhere else and just put some horizontal lines in don't be afraid of the dark stuff will you especially for this kind of moonlit and this will take away that flat feel into it because I mean it's quite flat right but I love the depth we've created the brush is quite dry as we do this skimming across horizontally and we've created that open sea thing. I might put a little boat there. Put a little boat there. Do you want to see a boat? We've got time to put a boat in. Should we do that in part three? Nice bit of texture. Skimming across the surface of the paper. Dead effective that. This is why we use textured paper, you see, to get this effect. And horizontal lines just give, they give instant depth, just straight away they give depth. It's really nice to have. Get a bit more gray at the front. Gonna put some, some light in the water as well. 
that looks nice. That looks good. <clears throat> so, creating this relatively simple scene. Um, it's effective. And I love how the colours come through. When you scrape the colour off, out of the three colours I used in these cliffs, the grey, dark skin and the green, the green and the skin tone are more of a stainer. So it leaves a residue of the colour. So you get that colour coming through, which is really nice. Lovely. We'll give that a bit of time to dry. And I think we'll paint a little boat there. Let's put a little boat there. Yeah, sod the expense. We, we can do a boat, can't we? So we'll paint a little boat there. Um, and what we're going to do for this is we're going to use natural grey again for this. Beautiful. There it is. Stick some in there. I've got a size 6 brush or a, or a small super point for this, which is a lovely pointy brush. It's pointless using anything else. You see that nice pointy? Give it a bit of a... Put a nice point on that brush. Yeah, beautiful. We'll use that. We'll use that nice and close in now as well, so we can see what we're doing. Um, I'm going to sort of put a little bit of a boat. I might put it over the spit mark. What we'll do is we'll paint a figure of eight. You've probably seen me do this before. But it's quite a nice little thing to do. We'll fill in one side of the boat. It's going to be a little bit of a... Boat just moored up. Right down. Across there and up the side. Clean the brush really well. Do it a bit of a wipe on tissue. So you've just got a bit of water, not too much. And literally just use water to soften. So that's the basic shape of the boat. <clears throat> Put the mast on with this card, I think, would be a good idea. Because it's a good way of getting a straight line. So what we'll do is we'll put some grey on the edge of a piece of card. A short edge of a plastic card. And then we'll pop that on. Pop that on there. And it just gives you that, that edge easily. Quickly and easily. Um, if I wipe that off and do half of that, so half the card, and then we'll put it on the back. Stern, right? Is that right? Stern? I think it is. There you go. I always think it doesn't matter if it misses a bit because it's giving you the basic shape to work to like I've not got the full coverage there so it gives you that nice little shape to play with I'll put the Rolex on where you put your rolls in yeah put the little flag on bit of water wash that line away there we should probably reflect this as well so we'll drop a reflection on And then we'll reflect the mast, and we'll do the mast just by coming down. Down there as well, look, so it's got that reflection in the mast. It just helps to give the reflection. You've got the boat there in its basic core, as it were. That little sort of yacht, <coughs> uh, little sort of moored up boat. I think to make it look as though it is actually moored up there, what I'd probably want to do here is to add a little bit of a anchor coming down. Just to say it is actually attached to somewhere, otherwise it's floating loose, right? We don't want that, do we? Push your boat out. What we're going to do is bring that in. Um, and add some little, very, very naive little bits of rigging. A little bit of a dry flip just coming down from the masts. Just to say there's a bit more life than just a... Can you see how it... I think that your mind fills in the gaps there and it gives you that little sense of the boat being there. And we've had a request for some bearded chuffs. So we'll put some bearded chuffs in the sky. If you've never seen one, this is a chuff. 
These are coastal chuffs, as opposed to bearded chuffs. A couple of little birds. You can't, you can't have two birds. What are you doing? You've got to have at least three. You can't, you can't have two. What are you doing? You've ruined it. I like that. It's nice. It's good. So that was all using uh, natural grey, which is kind of the star colour really when it comes to that kind of work. Um, but I want to put some light in this thing now. So what I've got here is a bit of scrap, scrap. Well, I've got a bit of paper. And I've got some Matthew Palmer white, which is lovely. Liquid. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Pop it on there. There's a bit of white. There is. And um, I'm going to use some white in this thing now. I've got the plastic card again, which has actually been used quite a bit on this project. Yeah, Let's wipe away the grey from it clean the brush as well and i'm going to take that white quite thick quite thick and catch it before it all runs away and put it on the edge of the card that's how it sort of builds up on one side so it's a little rolling waves nice come over to the picture I'm going to put some of these little rolling waves on, so let's put something sort of here. Sort of tap it across. And you get that sort of slightly broken wave. We'll, we'll get close into that actually in a second for you. Um, just to show you a bit more in detail. But what I want to do is get a bit more white on the card. This is a simple one to try. If you've got a spare hour, you know, have a go at doing something like this. You'll enjoy it. one just maybe just off center you sort of tap it horizontally and have a practice at it because it does take a little bit of practice same as anything but that's giving you like a breaking wave effect right really nice little thing to do to be honest quite a fan of that load up more white Once you get into the flow of it, you, there's no stopping you. You can do, obviously, thinner ones as you go further back. Let's just come back a little bit with a the zoom there. You can see a bit more what we're doing. There we go. That proves we are live. <laughs> Put something down here, don't we? There we go. And then again, we'll do some thinner ones. So it's bringing the light into the water at this point. I do want to get white elsewhere in this. Now I'm just going to put the white on the edge of the card this time and hold it pretty much horizontal. You can probably get two or three thin lines just by tapping the white on the off the edge of the card, paint it on. Could do some of those right next to these cliffs here. Look. Where you'd imagine the white to be just lightly breaking the edge. Perfect. And again, just a little bit of a white residue. It's just a, just enough on the card there, just to catch it. And it kind of makes a picture, don't it? You know, once you put this on. But the white's nice because it's balancing the uh, the moonlight. Quite effective okay um let me clean that piece of card then clean the brush so i want to put a bit more white on 
just in places, but just with the brush this time, just a brush, nothing else. So just get a little bit of white, you can see it on the brush there. And for the moon reflection, make sure we line it up. We can do little, little horizontal lines. I'm quite a fan of white. You can't use white. That's what the old, the old artists will say. You can't, you can't use white. What are you doing? I love using a bit of white paint. I think it's really nice. It does make quite a difference. And I'm sure a lot of you have discovered that if you've used this white itself, it's really effective. So I'm actually painting little horizontal lines here to represent that sort of reflection of the moon. We sort of line it up nicely. It's also a good way to slightly fade away any bits that you think you want to fade out on these edges. Put in a few bits of white elsewhere. It's quite effective, yeah? So it's giving you that nice effect of the moonlight. Bit of moonlight. Uh, if we do zoom in close, actually, just for the minute, I want to do this. That's the wrong way. <laughs> zoom in that way. It's been a while since I've done a demo. I had a Christmas break, you know. We're going to basically stip all the brush a little bit here and pop some little sort of taps of little little splashes of white. I think it all helps if we pop the actual card up against the edge of the cliff in the right spot. You can control where the splash wants to be. So you get that little bit of a crashing wave and then I lead that into the water, you see. I think it's these little bits that we're doing now that's really going to make this thing work. So do stay with it, we're nearly there. Lovely. Back to this bit here, which is the bit from the moonlight. Kind of want to be a little bit more brighter there. It's very much a painting of contrast, this, isn't it? So it's got that real definite you like coming down. We're very careful, could even get a little hint of that just on the edge of the on the edge of the boat there. Just say it's just to just to capture a little bit of light on the boat. You know you can see that just a little bit of a very subtle highlight. Um, I think it works quite well actually. Smashing. Just want to make sure I've got just enough white to and a couple of little flicks down in this foreground here. So if any of these white blobs and waves look lonely, surround them with a few more little bits of white and it really will help to balance it in for you. Remember that we did this entire thing with no sketching, it was straight out the out the palette, you know? So that's a nice thing to try. If you've never done that before, it's quite a rewarding thing to do. Because it means that you never know what's going to happen. All I knew is seascape, you know? That was basically all I was thinking was, oh, I want to paint a, a little bit of a seascape or something like that, you know? And that was the whole kind of script I had basically winging it if you know what I mean now I've got a uh, hanging around under the desk here we've got a, a mount look what a difference a good mount makes look at this yeah see look at that before can't beat a good mount right let's get back to the picture that's not the picture that's the palette that's the picture. Let's put the mount on this thing and have a look at it. Beautiful. Look at that. That's made a pleasurable picture. Easy on the eyes. Nice to look at. Simple techniques. The white has really 
made it pop. That was good fun.